everyone, and welcome to Uncivil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I hope you enjoy this legal education content, and today will be the day I earn that subscription for today's story. We are talking about the United States House of Representatives, which has passed a ban on different kinds of firearms. This would be the first major firearms ban since the lapsed assault weapons ban, which lapsed almost 20 years ago. And so now it goes off to the Senate for further consideration. So let's read this article for MMPR to figure out what's happening. Let's get started with this. The House passed legislation on Friday to revive a ban on certain semi-automatic guns, the first vote of its kind in years, and direct response to firearms often used in mass shootings throughout communities. Once banned in the United States, the high-powered firearms are now widely banned blamed as the weapons of choice among young people responsible for many of the most devastating shootings. Speaker Nancy Pelosi pushed the vote towards passage in the Democratic-run House, saying the earlier ban saved lives. That is incredibly debatable at best. Most of the, most of the sort of meta studies I've seen on the previous assault weapons ban suggested the previous assault weapons ban did little to nothing to save lives. So I, I don't think that that's really demonstrably true by the science. President Joe Biden held the House vote saying the majority of American people agree with this common sense action. Is it common sense though? He urged the Senate to move quickly to get the bill to desk. However, it's likely to stall in the 50-50 Senate, I would think. The House legislation is shunned by Republicans who dismissed it as an election year strategy by Democrats. Also because the, the ban by its own terms would prohibit arms in common use as confirmed by Nadler during the markup of the bill. It would, it would prohibit firearms in common use, which both defies U.S. v. Miller, it defies um, Heller versus McDonald, uh, Heller versus D.C. and McDonald versus Chicago, or Illinois. No, it was Chicago. So yeah, it, def it defies it because it's an ordinary and common use. So all that stuff, yeah. The bill comes at a time of intensified concerns about gun violence and shootings. The supermarket shooting in Buffalo, New York, the massacre of school children in Uvalde, in which my continuing contempt continues to go to the 370 police officers who did F all. So um, I'm not sure, can we ban the 370 police officers in addition to banning the guns? Because that would make me a lot happier. And the, Texas, and the July 4th shootings in Highland Park. Voters seem to be taking such election year votes seriously as Congress splits along party lines and lawmakers are forced to go on the record with their views. A recent vote to protect same-sex marriage from potential Supreme Court legal challenge wants a surprising amount of bipartisan support. Biden was instrumental in helping to secure the first semi-automatic weapons ban as a senator in 1994. Yeah, that's true. The Biden administration said that for 10 years while the ban was in place, mass shootings declined. The, the evidence that the uh, assault weapons ban did anything to save any lives is highly debatable. And the, and the meta-analysis I've seen seems to suggest it was ineffective at best. Republicans have stood firmly against the limits of owning the high-powered firearms during emotional time by saying it's a gun grab, which it is because it's literally trying to grab guns. Democrats have argued the ban on weapons makes sense, portraying them as extreme and out of step. Representative Jim McGovern of, De of Massachusetts said the weapons ban is not about taking away American Second Amendment rights, but ensuring that children have the right to not get shot in school. It's a little bit about taking away their Second Amendment rights, Representative, when you're taking away weapons that are in ordinary and common use, which is exactly what Heller and McDonald were talking about, as well as Miller, for that matter even though Miller's a bit of a garbage decision in terms of the Supreme Court analysis, it's just poorly written. Like, it's just not, it's just a well, not well-written decision. Uh, it still talks about things being in common use. Pelosi displayed a poster of a gun advertisement for children's weapons. Smaller versions that resemble the popular AR-15 and are marketed with child's cartoon characters. Disgusting, she said. Uh-huh. In one exchange, two Ohio makers, lawmakers squared off. Your freedom stops where mine begins, and that of my constituents begins, Democrat Representative Kapator told Jim Jordan. Schools, shopping malls, grocery stores, Independence Day parades shouldn't be the scenes of mass carnage and bloodshed. The, the, the rights don't work that way. 
you want to punish the people who do the bad things, great. But you want to punish law by Americans, you have a problem. The bill would make it unlawful to import, sell, or manufacture a long list of semi-automatic firearms. The Judiciary Committee Nadler said it includes an exemption that allows for possession of existing semi-automatic guns, so I guess get yours today. So if this bill passes, I suppose I have to go out and buy an AR-15. For nearly two decades since the previous ban expired, Democrats have been reluctant to revisit the issue. But voter opinion appears to be shifting. Yeah, but the legal domain is, is a problem. Jason Quimet, the executive director of the Institute of Legislative Action. I wondered who it was since Chris Cox left the organization. Apparently, it's Jason Quimet. Okay, how are you doing, Jason? Said in a statement following the vote that barely a month after the Supreme Court had expanded gun rights, gun advocates in Congress are spearheading an assault on freedoms and civil liberties of law-abiding Americans. He said the bill bans potentially millions of firearms in blatant opposition to the Supreme Court's rulings that have established gun ownership as an individual right and have expanded on it. Among the semi-automatic weapons banned would be 200 plus types of semi-automatic rifles, including AR-15s and AR-15 type pistols. The restrictions would not apply to many other models. It applies to a whole lot of models. A whole lot of stuff is named by name, incidentally. So it bans basically all sort of modern sporting rifles by name or deed. So it runs into massive constitutional problems for sure. Democrats have tried to link the weapons ban to a broader package of public safety measures that would have increased federal funding for law enforcement. It's something centrist Democrats in tough re-election campaigns wanted to shield them from political tax, their soft on crime. From the people who want to abolish the police? No. Pelosi said the House will revisit the public safety bills in August, when lawmakers are expected to return briefly to, wish to Washington to handle other remaining legislation. Congress passed a modest gun violence package just last month in the aftermath of the shooting in Uvalde. Again, the, the package you should be passing is the Stop Feckless Police Officers Act. Pass that act. That'd be great. The bipartisan bill was the first of its kind of many failed efforts to confront the gun lobby, including after the 2012 shooting in Sandy Hook, which Alex Jones is currently on trial for in defamation and getting as, as handed to him as he should because he failed to show up, which he's not allowed to do. The new law also frees up federal funding to states, including for red flag laws that enable authority to remove guns from those that would harm themselves or others. But even this modest effort at halting gun violence comes at a time of grave uncertainty in the United States over restrictions of firearms as the most conservative Supreme Court is tackling gun rights. Yeah, they're going to have a problem with a lot of this because you're banning a lot of firearms that are in normal, common, ordinary use. The Supreme Court is definitely going to have a problem with this. Thus, that brings us to the end of this discussion of this current article on the House wanting to ban many, many guns. So it would ban the manufacture, transfer, and sale of firearms. So I guess you could keep the ones you own for the moment. Wait till that stops being a thing. But they want to ban new ones, including weapons that are undeniably in common ordinary use, which would defy the U.S. Supreme Court. So yeah, this bill has constitutional problems written all over it, and I'm sure will be challenged in the courts as things persist. But at least for the moment, that brings us to end discussion of this case. Thank you so much for being part of the Uncivil Law family. If you enjoyed this legal education content, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. We appreciate your continuing support. Until later, my friends, cheers and goodbye.